The Unicorn Alphabet by Mariana Mayer. Pictures by Michael Haig. It's a beautiful book. The Unicorn. Okay. The Unicorn. A fabulous and beautiful animal appears in ancient folklore in many cultures. He has been portrayed in art throughout the ages as either fierce and courageous or gentle and pure, but he is always magnificent. The medieval unicorn tapestries are some of the most superb examples of the unicorn myth. Its hunt, capture, death, and resurrection are all depicted in a rich series of scenes. When these tapestries were designed, myth and symbolism were as real to people as everyday life. In the agrarian society in which they lived, there was much lore and solemn belief surrounding all plants and animals. Medieval gardens were a source not only of nourishment and fragrance, but medicine as well, and many of these same plants were grown to ward off evil. Plant and animal mythology was believed was believed in so completely that the decorative motifs within the unicorn tapestries held important messages for viewers, and these symbols emphasize the meaning of the story more fully. As we come to appreciate each symbol, we see tales within tales that expand our appreciation. From the placement of the smallest violet to the tallest oak tree, each detail is in a scene intensifies the story the tapestry set out to tell us. There is virtually an alphabet from A to Z of the legend and lore of the unicorn. The unicorn alphabet draws on these stories and symbols as a tribute to the one-horned mythical beast and captures a glimpse of the beliefs of an earlier time. Okay. A. The apple is the fruit of autumn. Can I see that better? In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve believed the apple was the fruit of knowledge. Like the unicorn, it is a symbol of ever renewing life. Oh, see the unicorn? B, the bluebell is a small, delicate flower, but a tiny sprig was thought to protect against evil. In the medieval times, peasants hung the bluebell over their doorway to guard against mischievous spirits. So that's the bluebell, the pretty little blue flowers. And I guess those are the mischievous spirits. <laughs> C. The slim columbine is an ancient flower. The medieval French considered it the flower of loyalty and constancy, qualities also given to the unicorn. Long ago, the columbine was used in magic spells as a remedy against poison. So that's the columbine flower. D, the daffodil. You see the daffodils? The daffodil, flower, stem, and root were, was once carried into battle by medieval knights who believed that the crushed root laid upon a wound would stop bleeding. The horn of the unicorn was to believe to heal in the same way. E. The ermine is a small, lithe animal whose dark fur turns snow white in winter. In the Middle Ages, the white ermine and the unicorn were both symbols of a maiden's purity. So there's the ermine. And of course, there's the unicorn. And there is a maiden. F, the fountain, 
was once the symbol of everlasting life and miraculous happenings. Legend tells of the waters from the fountain which feed a lake where all the good animals gathered to drink. There the unicorn watched over them. That's a beautiful fountain they drew. Okay. What is that picture of? Hmm. G, the goldfinch. Her sings her sweet song close to the unicorn. Though one of the smallest of birds, the goldfinch is the symbol of perseverance because she plucks ripe berries from among sharp thorns to feed herself and her young. So that's a goldfinch. There's another one. Holly. These are holly berries and holly leaves. The holly tree was once a talisman and, like the unicorn's horn, a weapon against evil. With its pointed green leaves and bright red berries, holly was planted during the Middle Ages to protect, protect against evil magic. Hmm. Here's the next picture. See the unicorn in there? And a bunch of irises, those beautiful blue flowers. The iris, I for iris, is a noble flower, was believed for centuries to cure every illness from snake bites to colds. Like the unicorns, the iris is a symbol of power and majesty. In the Middle Ages, French noblemen placed both images on their coat of arms. J. Hmm. J, the jewel weed. Oh, that must be that must be that right there, the jewel jewel weed. A flowering plant with small orange blossoms. Herbalists in ancient times used the milk white juice from its stem to soothe the pain caused by poison ivy and the sting of prickly nettle plants. What is that? Well, I see the unicorn right up there, and that is a dragon. The knight, K is for knight. The knight of the unicorn was the ideal medieval hero. In ballads and romances, he was compared to the noble unicorn. Fierce and courageous, this knight fought against evil and yet had compassion for all defenseless creatures. Okay, L. Here's a picture. I see a lion and a lady. The tale of the Lady of the Unicorn was a popular ballad in medieval times. She was a symbol of virtue, often pictured riding a snow white unicorn. Her true love was the knight of the lion who fought against evil with his faithful lion at his side. So he's the knight of the lion and she's the lady of the unicorn. M. Okay. M for marigolds. Oh, he's picking marigolds right there. Marigolds and mistletoe have both been linked to the magnificent unicorn. Marigolds were gathered to cure snake bites and the mistletoe had medicinal uses, which are still considered to be effective today. Oh. Some of these pages are hard to turn. Okay. Ah. And there's a unicorn. And there is a narwhal. 
The narwhal is a small Arctic whale with a long spiraled ivory horn. His horn is so like the unicorns that it too was used to cure ills. Medieval kings considered both a great treasure to possess. Wonder how many unicorn horns they found, huh? But narwhal, yeah, <laughs> those are real. So, oh, the orange tree. Oh, do you see the oranges in that tree? Is that close enough? The orange tree and its bright fruit signify fertility. After the Crusaders brought the oranges from the Holy Land, medieval Europeans adopted the belief that it, like the unicorn, represented the sacred union between a bride and a groom. Another unicorn with... Are we on P? So pomegranates, it's a pomegranate tree. The pomegranate is a preeminent symbol of fertility. Medieval art often portrays a unicorn beside a pomegranate tree. A branch was believed to keep away snakes and the ruby red juice from its seeds healed the sting of the scorpion. That unicorn is running. Oh, there's arrows. Hmm. In the quest for the unicorn, medieval hunters were determined to gain his magical horn. Although all such quests ended in failure, today the myth of the unicorn still fascinates us. <laughs> R for rose. See all those beautiful red roses? The rose was the best loved of all medieval flowers. Both the rose and the unicorn were adopted as allegorical symbols in medieval tales of love. Together and apart, they represent betrothal and faithfulness in marriage. S. For the serpent. Nope. The serpent was the enemy of the unicorn. In medieval myth, the serpent lives near a lake where the animals come to drink. If not for the protection of the unicorn, the animals would be prey to the wily serpent. is the next letter of the alphabet and these plants are thistles that are all the way around. The thistle plant, like the unicorn, was believed to have supernatural powers. In the Middle Ages, its crushed root was used to cure the plague. According to the ancient Greeks, the thistle plant protected those who carried it from all harm. You. For unicorn, of course. The noble unicorn has been a myth, mythic figure from time immemorial. Ancient Greeks called him fierce and invincible, vulnerable only to, to a pure maiden. Centuries later, in the Middle Ages, Christians claimed the unicorn as a symbol of Christ. V for violet. Those little purple flowers are violets. The violet was cultivated in medieval castle gardens for its power over evil spirits, and many were woven into the unicorn tapestries. White violets speak of innocence, blue of faithful love. Today, a bouquet of violets still means true love. W. The will see the water of life. Feel that beautiful water. 
The water of life can be found in a legendary lake where all good animals come to drink. Once the serpent poisoned the water, but the unicorn dispelled the poison with his ivory horn so that the animals could drink once more. <laughs> X. For um, zithro, hmm, zithros. I don't know that word. That's a big one. Zithros was a mythic hero who, like Noah, built an ark. Armenian legend tells of a time when great floods covered the earth, threatening all life. Zithros' ark sheltered the animals and sailed to safety with them. Oh, so there's a big arc right back there. And the unicorns, you see the birds? Yeah. Why? The yearling unicorn. The yearling unicorn sleeps beneath the shelter of the yew tree. Like the unicorn, the yew is a symbol of immortality. Once ancient and revered yew tree is believed to have survived for 2,000 years. So there's a, a yew tree right there. Z, the zephyr. A gentle breeze in the, is the name of the west wind. It blows through the silken mane of the unicorn who stands upon the zenith, gazing down on all creatures of the earth. The end.